if you if you prefer asking your question live. Um, but now let's get started. My guest today is um, Jovan. Jovan is the co-founder and CEO of Chino, um, a business or a, a company, a startup, uh, which solves data security and regulatory compliance challenges for digital health businesses. And um, Jovan has already a decade of experience in the health and IT industry. He also had a, has a PhD. Um, He succeeded in 2014 at the University of Trento, and his research explored technologies and protocols to allow health data to be shared in a legally compliant and secure manner. And it's very interesting um, that this actually led to setting up Chino. It's uh, amazing getting a startup from a PhD thesis. And in his presentation, Johan is now going to talk about his background, the idea of Chino, challenges, lessons learned, recommendations, and many interesting things. And I'm really looking forward to this presentation. And now I hand over to you, Johan. Um, the stage is yours. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks, everyone, for, for inviting me, for having me here. It's really a pleasure to, to be here and share our experience our our roadmap and journey so far so because it's very connected to innovation to education because as you said sebastian the idea starts from right away from from education uh, journey uh, as a phd in in trend but yeah um let me let me start with the, with the, my my presentation It's going to be 30 minutes, so uh, until 10.35, 30, 35, and then we will have 10, 15 minutes for Q&A. Happy to answer to all your questions. Um, actually looking forward for your questions. Um, yeah, so as Sebastian said, making our our topic, our uh, what, what I do in, with Chino IO, especially now, um, is making safe digital health innovation happen. So the, the topics, as also briefly mentioned, that I'm going to, to cover um, are a bit of an intro, but then privacy, what is privacy, what is GDPR, what is security, then uh, what is healthcare and how data protection, what is data protection in healthcare, and then how the Chinoyo uh, startup company idea originated, our typical startup challenges and how we evolve as a company and how we see the future. My main wish for today is that you, you guys there um, who are looking for, for career paths and who are looking for innovation and for exploring the opportunities, understand that um, entrepreneurship and innovation is nothing special. My, my career so far in my, my process so far is nothing special. It's just a result of passion, dedication to a topic, and let's say classical process of studying and exploring topics. So it's a, the, the, my, my wish is to tell you and to encourage you to start your own ideas and businesses later on, whatever they are. They don't need to be a for-profit startup company. They can be whatever they are. Um, but my, you know, the idea is that Uh, whatever you start, you just need to know the topic, a problem, and then wish you, you, you need to be willing to solve it. And then creating something successful is, is, is going to be easy. And I'm going to tell you what we, what we also got wrong in that path in our company. Uh, my background briefly, because um, I started, I studied, I grew up in Trentino, Sutiro. So our uh, beautiful region, just right uh, on the other side of the Alps uh, from, from Austria. Uh, I studied, I did my master, master in computer science and did an internship in a company uh, from Trento, GPI, uh, where I also did PhD. So my PhD was a bit of an in, uh, um, industrial PhD, PhD in University of Trento, computer science, but related to products and problems uh, identified in companies, including also HP Labs in California, where I had uh, time to, to do my um, PhD visiting period. That was a life-changing experience. And then after I finished PhD in 2015, started uh, Chino. But before jumping into uh, the topic of you know what we do at Chino, let me briefly 
tell you what is uh, privacy, what is GDPR or data protection, and what is security. I think it's a it's an interesting uh, topic, very very important nowadays. Why? Because privacy, as we have seen recently, uh, is a human right. Edward Snowden, uh, very inspiring story. Uh, you can watch different movies. I will show you later, but. Edward Snowden show us that privacy is a fundamental right and that government surveillance is a problem. Uh, but data protection, GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, is a bit different thing, shares same, same core values of privacy and a human right, but it's a regulation, it's a law. So there are a lot of things that are just regulatory requirements that need, you need to do in order to respect privacy of users and some of them are just administrative things so gdpr data protection is a bit it's overlapping but it's a bit different data security is a fundamental thing to ensure privacy and data protection you need to uh, prevent personal data breaches but data security don't doesn't cover necessarily only personal data it can cover also industrial data industrial espionage data so it's important to clarify that those two to three topics, when we talk about privacy and we, we talk about regulations, we are talking about similar concepts, but also a bit different concepts. Why privacy then is so it's so you know fundamental? Well, it's it's um, again it's something really personal that uh, we more and more people are, would like to have. Uh, it's a threat to our personal fundamental rights, and there are multiple cases recently in the last years that are analyzing how privacy is being eroded by digitalization because we don't really follow instructions. We don't really follow good practices in, in building even toys. Toys for children are collecting nowadays data and sending to somewhere servers. We, know, we don't even know where, and we don't even know what is being done with this data. So even toys nowadays present privacy challenges, social thermometers, are another type of privacy uh, invasive technology nowadays because they maybe provide us a nice app but this data needs to go through a server somewhere we don't know we don't have some frequently uh, information where this data is going then we have and more connected to the topic we have uh, scandals big problems in health applications and health applications as you know collect sensitive data uh, because it's a sensitive or special categories of data as defined within GDPR, uh, health data, uh, our um, political orientation, our uh, belonging to, to groups, organizations, uh, genetic data, um, racial information, everything is sensitive, special categories, health applications, frequently because of errors, because developers are not that uh, great in security and privacy, they don't really pay attention. They frequently misuse this data. For example, they share, they use Facebook logins to log in into an application and then send the data to Facebook because they maybe did an error because there is no explanation for this type of errors that happened in the recent years. And then there is another topic really related to this privacy. And I, as you can see, I did a bit of an, a generic introduction to, to, to set the stage of, 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 this, of these topics. There is the, the problem that if you, of data economy, that if you are not paying for the product, then you are the product. This is a topic that was originated a bit earlier than privacy and surveillance capitalism. But yeah, the, those are the really big topics that you know are, are we are facing as a society nowadays those are books and movies that you can read uh, some of them explain how the british brexit was uh, influenced by uh, the uh, data and manipulating us and and our profiling so it's a very big, big problem but then we work in healthcare in digital health innovation so what is data protection really in healthcare? Well, it's something much more practical, something much more related to what is healthcare. Well, healthcare is a set of, there is the patient at the center, and then we have a lot of services around that, around the patient. Healthcare providers, social services, governance, third-party providers, and so on and so forth. 
since 2010, 2000, early 2000, 2010, we strive, all countries in Europe and worldwide strive to connect to those services. We strive for interoperability and digitalization. So we have everything in one app, all our data, all our services. But that's really complicated. That's really where processes analyzing how this interconnection between different stakeholders and healthcare is really complicated. This is some of process mapping that we have been doing in 2010, where I got passionate about healthcare, where I really understood how the complex is this to map social services, healthcare, third party providers providing these different services. And since that time, we have seen that there were privacy challenges, that they, the, the main problem in, the, in mapping these processes and creating digitalization in healthcare is how to transfer this data, how to transfer the data between different actors and making sure that they only, who is need, who needs to access the data, access this data. And that was the, uh, the main, you know, starting point of my passion for privacy and my start of my PhD. Because in PhD, typically you analyze a problem that is common to different scenarios, to different projects, and you go deep and you try to understand what is the problem and try to understand really what could be the solutions and find solutions. You know, that's the, the that's how you approach pro, a PhD by identifying the problem. And the problems that we identified is that healthcare is really complicated, multitude of actors, um, different types of data, health, finance, uh, well-being, multitude of IT systems that need to talk to each other. Uh, very old systems, very new systems combined, and then, and then undefined processes. We were defining the, those processes and, and, and having really big challenges and unclear privacy uh, regulations. Uh, that was also before GDPR, but even with GDPR, things are not improving that much because there are all uh, national or regional regulations to consider also. So this is healthcare. This is what are the processes, what are the stakeholders, and how healthcare is really uh, problematic. One of the main examples was always NHS uh, related to privacy problems, because NHS in UK was the most digitalized infrastructure, and they suffered a lot, a lot, a lot of problems, um, billion euro problems related to privacy and, and misuse of data. They had to fix a lot of, lot of things. That was 2000 until 2000, uh, from 2020, 2014. And then you know how Chino originated. Well, during my PhD, I analyzed these problems and then analyzed, okay, how healthcare is evolving. And then uh, what I was surprised to find out is that uh, there were so many innovative technologies, so many social networks, and websites like Patients Like Me was really surprising to discover those solutions that were helping comp people to be more and more aware about their, uh, their, their health issues. Then the, we had a lot, a lot of mobile health apps emerging. emerging. One, the main one is My Sugar from Austria. Uh, very, very nice, uh, very nice uh, group of guys that were super passionate about diabetes. They solved the first, they created the first digital health application in Europe that was a success story, sold um, to Roche uh, later on, and uh, really a, a great success story. Um, and then globalization, because those digital health applications are global with a lot of challenges related to that. So considering all those evolution, innovation things, then I, I, I bumped into this thing, this, this study that was performed by 18 countries around, around the world that were, were suggesting that there are around 300,000 mobile health applications. They were around 300,000. Maybe at that time, they were even a, a bit less, but uh, that, that, that's somehow a number in those years. All of those apps, mHealth apps, collecting, storing, and sharing health data, right? Because they are mHealth. Well, the study in, in done by this uh, 18 data protection authorities showed that 85% of them were suffering by privacy and security problems. 85% of those hundreds of thousands of applications were having some issues. Well, then we had an idea, an idea to create 
a safe development platform for health applications for developers so there are so many entrepreneurs out there okay let's create since we are we were ict people it people let's create something to help them to create safe applications to a, a secure framework for developers and that was a cool idea um not only because i <laughs> i felt in love with it but also because we were recognized as one of the most innovative companies and startups in Europe. We won uh, EAT Digital Challenge in the end of 2014. Then we started in 2015 working on the company. We won 40,000 euros in cash. First prize, uh, we were younger, as you can see from the pictures. And yeah, together with a friend, Stefano, uh, uh, from my university um, friend and, and PhD colleague. So we started Chino, and then in later on, a couple of years later, we also won a big prize, much more than 40,000 euros. We, we won 1 million grand for uh, EAC accelerator or SME instrument. Um, then we, with that funding, we were able to create an amazing team in Berlin, where I live, and also in Italy, where uh, part of the team is. Then we started growing. but at that time, we were super eager to push forward our development platform, our solution, but then we failed to scale. We failed, the numbers were not uh, going great, we were not increasing uh, our sales, we had amazing marketing and sales team, but no, the, we were not scaling enough. And we had to evolve our business. This is typically called pi pi pivot, pivoting the business. In our case, it's evolving slightly, so it's a small pivot, but we had to change something. And then here, you know, today I, I'm happy to share uh, a couple of errors that we that we did, typical errors. Uh, but uh, in our case, it was strange because those errors happened later on. Nobody told us really before, even though we told, we spoke to many investors, we spoke to many people that were saying, "What you do is really cool. Go ahead." We got a lot of funding and so on, but we didn't really understood the value proposition fit and canvas. Those, this is a very kind of basic exercise, but it's it has really uh, basic in the sense that you need to do it at the beginning of your of your entrepreneurial journey. You need to understand what is your value proposition, compare you know to your customer profile and understand the fit. Here you can search more here um, and and learn it. There is a nice book or set of books, hundreds of books explaining this. But this is the basic uh, question: what your what's what you are solving? Understanding really what you are solving. And the error, the second error that we that we did is that uh, we took those numbers for from the market, three hundred thousand mobile health applications. Well, there were no 300,000 mobile health applications out there. Majority of those apps were super low quality and zero budget. They were tests. They were things developed by a one person entrepreneur sitting and developing a head up to track something and publish it on marketplace. So they were no 300,000. They were maybe 30,000. But it's also a challenging market for monetization, digital health, healthcare is really challenging for money because why because everybody thinks that health in europe especially that healthcare is free i mean healthcare assistance is free so nobody will pay for an app for healthcare assistance many would pay for apps games uh, social media food ordering and so whatever but no one wants to pay for mobile health applications so it's not a big numbers game there are no hundreds of thousands of potential customers out there that's a big problem so it's not it cannot be a big numbers game okay so we didn't understand the fit the product market fit and we didn't understand the market where we were playing okay how we then evolved well first thing we did is since we had an amazing team and that's really the key thing in startups and, in, and you know if you want to create your own entrepreneurial journey is you need to have good partners you cannot do it alone you cannot you can't do anything alone you need to have two three four good partners not necessarily friends but partners 
who you can trust. What first thing we did is we asked potential customer how they currently solve data protection problems. We were solving data protection problems. We had amazing ideas. We won amazing money, but we never asked really how they were solving the problem that we want to solve for them. And then we had really to understand what is compliance really really into details and compliance is really a complex matter everybody hates it yeah everybody hates it we love it that's why we felt in love with this problem and that's why we want to solve it for everyone compliance is a thing uh, it's defined by regulations gdpr regulation and includes legal uh, paperwork legal challenges solved by lawyers typically organizational so policy within your company how you govern the policy how employees how customers are managed technical things what you develop what you need to develop in your application encryption consent uh, anonymization and so on and physical where you store this data is it in the cloud on premise where in europe and us you know now maybe that there is a big problem with transfers of data to us and these originated by the way with snowden and a guy an enter entrepreneurial guy he was a phd student in law in uh, in in austria max schrems who went to the european court of justice and said okay this is illegal now, now that we transfer the data to us and the european court of justice said yes because there is a spying activity going on in in over over the ocean so we should stop it we should prevent it that happened many years ago still we are there still we are discussing these things it still is a very very active topic but coming back to the compliance topic what is compliance really well compliance is all those things and compliance currently sold I mean how typically companies were solving it well they were doing something with lawyers but who, who typically don't really have technical skills and, and knowledge on, on encryption, pseudonymization, and so on. Now, a bit more and more, but typically not technical awareness. Organizational things were typically not done or mm, fragmented. Then the dev team didn't have the legal background uh, and didn't talk to lawyers how to solve certain, implement certain things. And then the physical, it's it was they were every company was choosing wrong tools to develop their product so we were selling something in this environment where there were no communication and there were no process and we were trying to solve one part of the problem well while, while the problem was much much more bigger but then we asked ourselves okay but how we should solve compliance what we really can do for companies to solve compliance well they we understood very easily that we should start from the legal analysis and then move into tech. I mean, you start with the legal analysis, you start understanding what a company does, and then you tell them, look, you should do encryption here. Here is not necessary. This data is anonymous. This data is pseudonymous. This is uh, sensitive and so on. Because at the end, compliance is about doing everything right based on your data, based on your business, and making sure that you document everything. So it has to start from the legal mapping and analysis of the company. So we had the face to face the, 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 the problem. If we want to solve really the problem, then we need to start from the legal. And then we, what we did is we added lawyers to our team and we started doing legal and technical consultancy and technical solutions. So we cover all these steps from the beginning to the end for companies and we do it the right way, the way that companies appreciate the way the companies are willing to pay for our services and they really love what we do so at the end we had to combine regulatory knowledge technical expertise and technology in a unified approach to do the analysis design implementation and documentation of data protection and security for companies so to cover everything because this is so complex everybody hates it Nobody wants really to understand these steps and buy a specific thing from us on the tech side, even though we would love to do that, but you need to solve it completely. So that was our lesson. And by talking to the customers, understanding really, really, really in details, what is the problem and solving with 
uh, with the customers, I mean, for customers, this problem. And to summarize, at the end, you know, what we really deliver to companies, we help them to eliminate risks for sensitive data management. We'll help them to cut costs because by doing the things right, you prevent a lot of errors, a lot of delays. Sometimes those delays can cost you a lot of money. Uh, so we save their time to market. We help companies to be on the market faster and we help them to stay compliant. In addition to GDPR, we also consulted them on HIPAA for US market. So basically we are the key player for many, many companies who wants to go from Europe to US or vice versa, from US to Europe or from Australia to Europe and US. So we really uh, combine different regulations. And here, uh, some of the customers we helped over in the last three years, over 200 uh, companies uh, to do it right, to, to, to make sure that they are secure and compliant according to European and US regulations. Uh, we are one of the, we are the key, very special provider in Europe. So kind of unique offering for digital health. And with those, we, on those regulations, so we have a lot of partners and accelerators calling us to present, to, to help their startups um, that they are accelerating to do it, to do it right. Uh, we are also involved in European projects. Uh, some of them are on AI, uh, some of them are on COVID, some of them are on uh, heart stroke registry repositories. So we help uh, even big, big consortia of 30, 40 companies uh, doing and hospitals doing the things right. So not only, you know, single startups and or SMEs or large companies in with one product, but also very complex environments with with data protection, ethics, AI. AI has its own regulations and so on. So, so we, we are really, let's say, specialized and uh, and yeah, that's uh that's uh, what we achieved so far and i since we are here uh among amazing students i also would like to uh, not lose the opportunity to say that we have current open positions as project manager as a sales development representative as data protection consultant cyber security consultants and internships in all those areas if somebody wants to learn more if somebody is passionate about any of those subjects and our vision of healthcare uh, and helping entrepreneurs, then you can check on our website or write me at yovan at chino.io. Uh, happy to hear from you what you know would like to do. We we helped a lot of interns and and young professionals develop their careers over the years. So I'm really happy about that. And just a brief look at the future, how we see the market. Well. Uh, we see it very positive from different point of view, positive for, uh, for us, allowing us to have impact, to grow as a company, to grow in terms of revenue. But at the end, what really matters, what we really like, would like to do is to have impact. Uh, impact is in this market is necessary because the market is growing. We need digitalization. We need healthcare. Um, we need we need better healthcare services. For example, now in uh, in Germany, you can be prescribed a digital health application instead of a pill or treatment. You can be prescribed a digital health app, DTX, digital therapeutics. Very cool things that is being replicated across the globe. Application complexity is increasing. We want more and more APIs, more and more data. We want AI everywhere, AI machine learning everywhere. But then we have also more and more regulations. GDPR is one, but there are many other regulations, uh, national regulations, uh, AI-related, data, health data space in Europe. There are, there are many, many things happening. But at the same time, the importance of privacy and security is also increasing. So hacks and privacy are, hacks are increasing. Privacy is becoming more and more a value. So more people demand privacy from their providers from app providers so more and more people would like to 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 um, um, ensure compliance so we see this as a as a future that is growing in complexity and demand for our services and, and guidance on, on data protection and security that's it that's all that i wanted to say 
thanks for your attention. I'm happy now to, to answer to your questions, curiosities, and anything you have to ask me. Uh, thank you, Jovan, for this nice presentation. Um, I really liked how you also stressed um, the errors on the way, and I think you also have a bright future considering the growing market and um, the importance of, of digital health. And um, for the audience, please um, write down your questions in the Q&A chat or 